Welcome to the Warhammer store. Let me know if you need anything. What's that? Oh. Uh, you've never been here before? Usually we have a pretty uh, regular group of customers. So I wasn't sure if you've... Yeah, the people who usually come in already kind of seem to know what they're looking for usually, so... But you... you aren't familiar with Warhammer. Yeah, well, I'd love to walk you through the stuff that we have, if that's okay. I don't get to really talk about it very much. Um, so are you looking for books? We have a lot of painting things. We've got acrylic paint and paintbrushes and holders for miniatures. Um, we have a lot of miniatures too. Um, we also have a couple board games. Yeah. Um, let me see. Do you play Dungeons and Dragons at all? Okay, well, we have, like, D&D type miniatures here, but they're specific for, like, Warhammer. It's just a different type of kind of universe, I guess, if you will. There's the fantasy side, and well, it's now Age of Sigmar the fantasy side, and then you've got 40k, which is all sci-fi stuff. Yeah. Do you like fantasy or sci-fi more? A little bit of both? Okay. Well, I can show you our book selection first. Let's see. Um, okay, if you like, if you like sci-fi, um, right up front we here have a couple of the Horus Heresy books, um, and the Horus Heresy is like a really kind of quite a big series. Um, I'm more into the fantasy side myself, so I can't tell you very much about the Horus Heresy, but it's very popular. It's, um, I've heard a lot of really good things about it, so here are a couple of the editions that we have. You can see um, over on the far wall, that's where we keep our fantasy, or er, sci-fi books. So the entire Horus Heresy will be over there, along with a couple other things, um, from the 40k side. But here's the Betrayer. The Mark of Kalth. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Like I said, I am not as familiar with the, um, sci-fi side. And the Unremembered Empire. So... They have them in order over there, too. I'm not sure where these belong in the series, but uh, we have plenty of the, the 40k side. Uh, I can talk to you a little bit more about the fantasy books, if that's something you're interested in. Yeah, sure. So, we have this. If you are into horror, we have a whole separate kind of subgenre that's called um, Warhammer horror books, and this one is set in the fantasy, um, kind of before their end of time, so before their apocalypse. Um, kind of just, sort of just getting close to it, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, the timeline can be kind of confusing, I think. But this is Jack and Phil's, and it's all about Basically, Dragonfels is kind of like the Count Dracula of the universe, so a vampire that has like a lot of... He's kind of infamous for being kind of scary and evil and that type of thing, so this story starts off with um, a couple of heroes going in and slaying him, and that's the prologue. The rest of the story is about this playwright who is putting together a play that kind of recounts that tale, and he has to talk to some of the people that were there that day, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff that happens along the way, and then they decide to actually perform the play at the castle where Drakenfell's 
was slain. So, um, it's very interesting, and there's a full series. Uh, this could be a standalone. It kind of, it does have a full story arc, um, but then you can kind of continue on one of the other vampires, the rest of her journey, um, and on that side over there is where we have our fantasy books, so you'll find the whole series over there. But this is the first one in the series, and it's really good. And this is personally my favorite in the series. So, put that aside. Another really, really, um, kind of one of our best sellers is this Godric and Felix series. This is the first Omnibus. So the Omnibus has... I'm not sure exactly how many books are in each omnibus. I think it's like three, um, but I thought that there might have been more. This one has one, two, three, and a collection of short stories. Okay, so this one has three books in it and a collection of like five or six short stories. You can see it's pretty big, but it's really good. We also have, if you do decide that you like this, we have Omnibus uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and then the 6th one comes out this summer. So, the idea behind this one is it's about a bard and a dwarf slayer. A dwarf slayer is a dwarf um, who's taken the slayer oath to basically just kind of fight and um, basically die in a, a battle of some sort. They usually take the Slayer Oath because of some kind of dishonor that they brought upon their family, so dying in like a heroic way, it kind of erases that for the family, so. So basically, Slayers um, kind of seek out battles where they might um, die in order to reclaim that honor. So, this is kind of his story, Godric going out, and then Felix as a bard who decides to ta tag along uh, to kind of write the stories and songs and be inspired by the adventures that Godric has, and then over time it becomes both of their, um, both of their adventure. I haven't read this one either, but I know the, the main premise. It's on my list though. So that might be fun. Then there is another one of our bestsellers, is The Sundering. I have read this one. And this one has, I think, three books and two short stories in it. And it's really good. It's about kind of the creation of the Dark Elves, um, if you're familiar with really any kind of, like, Skyrim, like the Elder Scrolls, there's the High Elves and the Dark Elves, and, and, um, and even, like, World of Warcraft, there's the Night Elves and the Blood Elves, and so there's, you're familiar with different types of elves. So this is about the creation of the Dark Elves in the Warhammer universe from the High Elves and kind of how there was, like, a of political stuff and how certain people came into power and kind of their origin stories. So this one's really cool. There's um, some good characters origin stories and then there's some bad characters origin stories and just kind of their history of their race. It's also very big because it's an omnibus. You'll see that we have a lot of them. If you do prefer to just get the big books, the, um, the Drakenfells series also comes as a, an omnibus. You'll find it over there. I personally prefer to keep my books smaller, but this one is really good. And the, maybe once you finish this one, or maybe if you wanted to start in more present day, it's not Age of Sigmar, but, so it's before the... Age of Sigmar is the kind of what happens after their apocalypse, how they kind of start coming back um, from that like 
from the end times or the apocalypse. So there's like different races and things get a little different from the typical older fantasy. But this is before the end times or maybe during it. I haven't read this one either. I know it comes after the sundering though. This is more of the, the people that you'd be familiar with if you were to play the um, like Warhammer Total War game. I think it's about like their rulers um, of the high elves, so like the current Everqueen, I think Tyrion and um, ah yes, Tyrion and Teclas and Eltharion, who are the current heroes of the high elves. It looks like it does happen during the end times or when you're starting to get into it. So this might be fun. This is more present day elves, not so much as like the creation of the the dark elves. It's the dark elves are established in this and kind of talks about their their current stories, I think. While we're on the topic of video games, uh, Warhammer does have a couple really, really great video games. There is Total War, um, Warhammer. I think it's I think it's the second one that's the most popular right now. But uh, the third Total War Warhammer is supposed to come out this year. They just announced it like last week. So I've had a lot of people come in who've been really, really excited about. Um, that one is like a strategy game, so you kind of have your troops and um, you have your factions and things and you make some political decisions if you do a campaign mode where you can just do uh, like a war mode where you have your your different troops and you like place them and and have them do different things and you've got your heroes and it's the same kind of thing and it's cool. You can fight like different factions so you could do like the dark elves versus like elves, really, because they end up being, I think. You can also do, like, Skaven, which are their rat men, versus, like, the Empire, which is their just their human factions. Uh, it's, it's meant to be, like, Germany kind of area. Let's see. And then there is Vermintide, which is my personal favorite. Vermintide is a first-person shooter. Um, but there's like a lot of melee in it too. I think it's actual like the focus is melee and then you've got your your ranged weapon as kind of a support. But it's really cool you play as um, one of five heroes. And it could be two or three humans. It's kind of hard because their classes are different but you can basically play as like a human witch hunter, a human knight mercenary ranger. Um, or a human fire wizard. And then there's a wood elf and a dwarf. And they've both got a couple different classes too. But it's a first person shooter and you're fighting the Skaven, who are the rat men. And also in the second one you fight kind of viking zombies. And also beast men. So like satyrs and minotaurs and that type of thing. It's really cool. There's a one and a two, and they're both really good. Um, on the sci-fi side, I know that there's there's one that's out that's supposed to be good, but I can't remember the name of it. But one is coming out this year, and it's called Dark Tide, and it's it's just like Vermintide. I think it will be. It looks like it from the trailers, but it's sci-fi. So if that sounds fun, and if you enjoy first-person shooters, you should keep both of those on your radar. Vermintide is my personal favorite. I think I just hit like a thousand hours in that game. Yeah. But anyway, those are the books we have and the um, the video games that you can find on Steam at least, but I think that they've got Xbox too. Um, did you say that you were interested in looking at some miniatures? Yeah, okay. So I'll show you actually, let's see. I'll show you the Godric and Felix one first. So we have, this is a miniature of Godric, the Slayer Dwarf. And he is, I don't know if you can see the detail, he's standing on a 
kind of mound of his fallen enemies, which are Skaven in this case, so you can see kind of um, maybe some of the details of like the rat men. And he's kind of just standing up there victoriously with his giant battle axe and his mohawk, which all of the slayers have red mohawks. Um, so this one's really cool. We do sell them. This one comes as parts, so you kind of assemble it. I assembled this one, but there's some some glue that you can buy over by the painting supplies as well. And the glue that we sell works really, really well at holding everything together. It's like super glue, especially kind of designed for this type of thing. But this is Godric. And then if you want some enemies, let's see. So I had just mentioned those beastmen. So like the satyrs and things. Let's see. So like we have this guy who is like their, I don't know, he's got their battle horn. So you can see he's like blowing into the horn and then he's got a dagger on the side. And we've glued some skulls and bones on the bottom of his platform. But that's completely up to you, because these also come as parts. We also have this guy, who is their bannerman, <laughs> bannerman, banner carrier, however. Um, so you can see, obviously, the banner. He's holding an axe, but you can change that around, too, as you go. And we've glued a little um, helmet here. Or maybe that's a skull with horns and things. But this is what our beastmen look like. So they've got skulls. I don't know if you can see the detail very well. So they've got their horns and tusks and they've got their goat-like faces. <laughs> and you can see their furry um, legs and their hooves as well. So we've got that and then we've got... You could put them together however you'd like again, but there's this guy who's kind of dual wielding like a, a falchion or something with a, an axe. And then we also have this guy who has an axe and a shield. So the packs that we have come with the beastmen parts, but also with plenty of different shields and weapons for you to make your own kind of combinations, however you'd like to. And the packs come with like a bunch of different beastmen, so you could have like a whole little mini troop of them. We also have a couple of the heroes from Vermintide, so we have a couple that you can get them unpainted. Uh, they will come just like this, though no assembly required for these guys. This is the human mercenary from the Vermintide games. His name is Marcus Gruber. Um, and he's got his halberd, he's got a sword at his hip, and on his back he has a, I think that's like a, oh maybe that's just a gun. It was, he, he gets a couple different gun options in the game, I think this is just a, a handgun. On his side he's got a little healing potion. And he's got his hat with a feather in it, which is kind of his signature look in the games. Or for that class, anyway. He's got... You can play him as a ranger and a, a knight. You can play him as an imperial knight, so like a German knight. Or um, a Bretonian knight, and the Bretonians are French, so like a French knight. <laughs> and then we also sell these painted, if you'd like. So here we have our fire wizard. From Vermintide. Her name is Sienna. Um, you can see the detail. Uh, very, like, the fire is pretty shimmery. And you can see some gold on her staff and in her hair as well. In the game, her hair actually kind of, like, looks like flames when she gets to, um, when she's used too much magic. And then we also have some architecture sets as well, so 
these are bigger. They'll be more of a more of a project to kind of paint, but we have this. This you could use as any kind of graveyard or chapel. And you can use it as a set for a game or for like a diorama of some kind. They actually do, um, in the Vermintide game, go to one of the graveyards so you can kind of pair them together that way. This is unpainted and unprimered, but you can get primer and painter. see the roof. It's very detailed. And the stone kind of overall. And then up top you can see some little gargoyles and things. And this particular one comes with a tombstone set as well, so I'll show you a couple of them. different ones and it's a bunch of them in there so you can kind of vary it up a little bit but there's this one which is pretty plain there's not anything on it it's just a tombstone shape there is this one which is a different shape and it's got a cross on it on both sides um this one is yet another shape with another cross and this one's got a little bit more of a base than the other, so it's kind of easier to stand up. But this one's my favorite, because it's got some more depth to it, you know? I like this one a lot, but those are the four main models. And there's just a bunch of them in here, so you can have it look like a graveyard outside of the kind of the chapel or the I, probably not mortuary I'm not sure that that's the word I'm looking for but like the sanctum I don't know I know there's a word for it I'm just can't remember it all right so let me move these miniatures aside and then I will show you our games so if you are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons we have the same type of books, uh, campaign books. So if you have ever kind of DM'd for a DD, and d or if you know someone who does, this might be a good gift. But this is a, a campaign book to walk you through one of the Warhammer campaigns. And you play it very similarly to D&D. &D. The dice are a little different, but it's essentially the same game, just in a different universe. We have this book, Enemy in the Shadows. I've never played it, so I can't really talk about it at all, but we do have a lot of others over in our um, board games section. They're just like right past the fantasy books. It's the fantasy board games and, and campaign books and that type of thing. But... Here. I'll show you a couple of the pages. This is a this is a map. This might actually help you. Let me show you. This, if you can see it, is a map of the Warhammer world, part of it anyway. And you can see like the Empire is kind of where Germany would be. Um, Bretonia is kind of near where France would be. Um, it looks very much like Western Europe. So, you can see Estalia is Spain. Talia is Itali I I Italy. 
Um, let's see. The Border Princess are... I think that starts getting into... The, uh, like, kind of Egypt. Kislev is Russia. So, that type of thing. So, yeah, it's very much, um, kind of inspired by our own world, specifically. Um, specifically, Western Europe. Sorry, I was looking at different parts of the map. So, but you can see there's different types of characters that you might encounter, and let's see, it's more of the story. So, this one's really, um, Probably cool. <laughs> they all look really cool though if you go over and look and you can kind of read the back to get a better idea of the like plot of it. And then of course we have our starter set. So so in this box we have a starter book which kind of goes through all the characters and all the types of characters and classes you can play and how to roll for your character and this one also comes with dice. I think a map or a board. Let's see. And I think also a starter campaign. Yeah, and some character sheets and things. Some dice and markers and things. Okay. A game master screen if you were to play in person, which we haven't really been able to this past year, but it comes with six ready made characters as well. So if you want to kind of just figure out the game first before making your own character, you could do that and go with one of those, but I'd highly recommend getting this if it sounds at all interesting to you, but it's up to you. But that is what we have up here, and now if you'd like to, I'd, I'd highly recommend going to look at the books on both sides and, and the miniatures as well. You might notice behind me there's some um, some tables and chairs and things. A lot of people will come in just to paint miniatures and then to play the board game. The miniatures are used to play the board game. Didn't mention because I don't usually play the board game. So I just do the like the role playing game. But you can basically play Total War like on a table with the miniatures you have and just make it like a strategy kind of thing. A lot of people come in and do that. Um, a lot of people do come in and play the role playing games. And some people just come in by themselves just to paint their miniatures. <laughs> so, it's kind of like a hangout session back there. Whatever you kind of want to do. So, if you feel like hanging around, you could definitely do that as well. But, I'll let you kind of look around now that you have an idea of what you might be looking for, okay? Alright, I'll be up here if you have any questions at all. No, thank you. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you.